Happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gents. Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew, and today is Thanksgiving, as I just mentioned no more than 10 seconds ago. And for those of you who may live outside the United States, I know there's a couple of you who watch my channel, Thanksgiving is a holiday in the United States. It's kind of a feast day, so usually it's a day spent with friends, there's food and lots of merriment. You basically go to your family's house or to your friend's house and eat a bunch of good food. You talk about what you're thankful for and you just have a day to kind of relax and be with your family. And it kind of harkens back to a certain sort of thing that happened in history. The origins of Thanksgiving are kind of cloudy. There's some disagreement as to what the true origins are. So I'm not going to go into that, but just realize that Thanksgiving is kind of a day to give thanks, to rest, to be with family, enjoy some good times and eat some good food and be thankful in general. And being that it's Thanksgiving, I'm going to pull up my show notes here, I thought it would be a really good idea, since this is a day all about giving thanks, we talk about something called the attitude of gratitude. Now, you may have heard this phrase before, or maybe in passing, or you heard somebody say, have an attitude of gratitude. But maybe you don't understand what that means entirely, or kind of are wondering what it meant, so we're going to dive into that today. So to kick things off, we should start with the basic what question, which is, what is an attitude of gratitude? Well, I wrote it out as being, it's drawing attention to good things you have going on in your life and making conscious note of them. And that's just a big fancy way of saying, being thankful, I guess you can say, for even just the smallest, most minute little thing. So if you woke up this morning and you drew breath, that's something to be thankful for. So you should be thankful for it. If you have clothes on your body and food in your belly, that is something to be thankful for. So you should be thankful for it. Gratitude is very much a mentality of being thankful for the little things and having an attitude of gratitude is consciously putting your brain towards that idea of gratitude. So being thankful for even the smallest of things. And again, it sounds really intimidating when you start off with it. It's this attitude of gratitude, this very, it feels like a, it's kind of like a halo effect as they call it, or it's like this far off thing that, you know, will never be achievable. Having a true attitude of gratitude is almost impossible, but it's actually really easy. It's not hard at all to start having an attitude of gratitude. And of course, with all things in life, you can start small and then get bigger. So how do you get started with having an attitude of gratitude or how do you point your thoughts towards gratitude? Well, it's kind of like what we just described. So if you, every morning um, I wake up and I pray to God, I say, hey, thank you God for the, another day on this earth, another day to do good and to do your work. That's a blessing to me. So somebody didn't get to wake up this morning. So I'm thankful for that. And another thing you can do is take some time every day to thank somebody for something. So maybe there's a coworker or a friend or a mentor or a teacher or a boss that you haven't talked to recently or you haven't thanked them for something recently. So you can go give them some thank yous and some words of praise. Be like, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. I just wanted to thank you for all that you've done for me recently. And strike up a conversation. Put that positive energy into the world. So. Basic stuff like that, waking up every morning, being thankful for another day, talking to people, being thankful for the things that they do to you, um, paying somebody's toll. I don't know that, I have a toll tag, so I don't pay tolls like in a little bit anymore, but if you pay somebody's toll behind you, then that's an attitude of gratitude or that's giving positive energy and being thankful that you have a little bit of extra money so you give it away so somebody else can go through the toll booth. Little stuff like that, just little positive things that you can do every day that kind of reinforce that idea of gratitude or get you more thinking about gratitude and the good things and being thankful. Now, how does this work on a psychological level? And again, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a mental health expert, but I have gone through a fair bit of mental health conditioning and mental health recovery myself, and I could talk to a little bit to what I've experienced. So. The attitude of gratitude is one thing that works on a concept that's pretty ubiquitous in psychology. I don't know if I phrased that correctly. So there's this thing in psychology called habituation. And habituation is at the root of a lot of things in psychology for better or for worse. But the attitude of gratitude works on this idea of habituation. And habituation is a big fancy way of saying that when your brain becomes accustomed to something, it kind of becomes easier for it to do it, if that makes sense. Um, to give you an example, let's try a little experiment. So I have a fan in my room and it makes just a little itty bitty noise. 
and I also have an air conditioning unit or an air conditioning vent in my room that also makes a little itty bitty noise. Now, think about the room that you're sitting in right now. Do you have AC in your room or do you maybe have a fan or maybe there's a, a light that kind of buzzes? So initially, whenever the AC kicks on, I can hear it. I'm like, oh, the AC kicks on. But after a couple of minutes, I realize that the noise coming from the AC is kind of irrelevant or it, it doesn't have any immediate impact on my life. So my brain kind of just tunes it out as noise. That's the perfect example of habituation. And your brain does this with thoughts, it does this with actions, it does it with habits. So the more that your brain does something, the more it habituates to it and the easier it becomes to do that thing. So when it comes to the attitude of gratitude, it may be hard to think about what you're thankful for or really focus on even just the smallest little things to be thankful for, but over time it gets a lot easier. And that in mind, the idea of an attitude of gratitude, um, it plays on habituation like we said, but there's also another key component to this, and that's the idea of a scarcity mentality versus an abundance mentality. Now, a scarcity mentality, it's been cited in a bunch of different books, scarcity and abundance mentalities are two ways that you can kind of view the world and your positioning in life. Scarcity means that I'll never have enough or I have a scarce amount of things and I'm worried about that. I don't have enough to do this or I don't have enough to do that. Abundance says that I have plenty of what I need to do whatever I need to do in life and to that end I'm happy and I'm peaceful with it. So it follows that the scarcity mentality is having a mentality that I don't have enough of a certain thing or I don't have enough in life therefore I cannot prosper. An abundance mentality says that I have plenty of what I need, I'm happy with where I'm at, and life is good. So you kind of have to pick your poison, and I'm sure you know certain people in your life who have a scarcity mentality. I know them in my life, and to, to be totally frank with you, they annoy the crap out of me because there's a very keen difference between suffering and desire to do something and scarcity or woe is me kind of talk. and. When you have a scarcity mentality, or if you know somebody who has a scarcity mentality, the next time that you see them, kind of play a game with yourself. Listen to how many times they say, or they talk about a certain desire that they have. Like, I, I only wish I had this, or if I had this, I could do X. Or if I wasn't this, or if I wasn't that, I, those are words of scarcity. So this thing isn't present, that thing isn't present. Because this thing is present, I can't do this. Or because this thing is present, I can't do that. Those are all scarcity tactics. And again, there's, there's a very fine line between legitimately hurting. Like if you say, I don't have a place to go at night or I don't have food in my belly, I'm starving. That's a legitimate problem. But for a lot of us, especially those of us who live in the civilized world, it's not usually the case that things are as scarce as you think they can be. Because like I've grown up fairly blessed, you know, I, I live in a fairly nice house, I've got loving parents, and I realize that there are some people who may not have the best opportunity that I do. And so I feel an abundance of blessing and an abundance of happiness because I have these things. And on the other end of the coin, if I didn't have those things, I could very easily just say, woe is me, I wasn't born in, you know, a good family or a good neighborhood or that sort of thing. I'm just going to cry about it for the rest of my life. And that's the scarcity mentality. Whereas the abundance mentality starts to say, okay, I've not gotten the best hand, but I can work with this. I can get out of this. I can become educated. I can go out into the world. I may not have the best opportunity, but I will make the best of what I have. I have enough to make something happen. See how that works? So scarcity, abundance, scarcity, abundance. That's what we're getting at. So when you habituate, this is where we kind of tie everything together. So with the idea of habituation in mind and the idea of a scarcity mindset and an abundance mindset in mind, to really adopt a mentality or an attitude of gratitude, you need to habituate to the mentality of abundance. That is to say, you have to tell your brain or you have to make conscious efforts to be thankful for even the most little things in your life. So. I am thankful every morning that I get up and I can breathe another day. Some people take that for granted, but I don't. I wake up every, or I'm happy every day when I can put food into my body or I can exercise and I have my full facilities to do exercise. Or I'm thankful every day that I get to go into work and I talk to my coworkers and they're happy. I'm thankful for every day I get to go to school and learn something new because there are people in this world who can't go. And I'm sure we can all think of somebody who gets up every morning and says, oh, another day, woe is me. Or people who go and eat food, and it's like, oh, 
I just, I'm still hungry, yada, 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 or they go to work and it's like, man, I don't really like my job, the people that I work with suck, and, or people who go to school and they say, man, school blows, I can't wait till I get out of here, yada, yada, yada. So those are four unique cases of the abundance mindset versus the scarcity mindset. And the more that you think about abundance, the more that you make it a priority to be thankful for even the smallest things, the easier it becomes to habituate to that, and overall, you will adopt an attitude of gratitude. So, I've gone through a lot of things here. Um, I'm just going through my notes here, make sure I'm on track. And like I mentioned, the more you're thankful, the easier it gets. That's how habituation works. The more you do X, the easier X becomes. So the more that you feel happy with abundance, the easier that it gets to be thankful for even the smallest things. So to wrap things up, we talked a lot about the attitude of gratitude, what it means to be Gratuitous, I guess you could say. Well, I don't want to say gratuitous, but to be grateful. That's the word I'm looking for. What it means to be grateful and how to adopt a attitude towards being grateful, even for the smallest little things. And then we talked a little bit about habituation, the scarcity mindset, the abundance mindset, and how all of those things work together to help you adopt that attitude of gratitude. So eventually, once you do adopt your attitude of gratitude, there's a lot of benefits to that. When you're thankful for even the smallest little things, then your life becomes a lot easier. Well, I don't want to say life becomes easier, but life becomes a lot better, or a lot easier to maneuver, I should say. Your relationships will get a lot better. Generally, those who are in relationships and they're thankful for their friendships, thankful for your relationship with your significant other, those relationships tend to last. And overall, you just, it's interesting. The universe has kind of a way, or your higher power, I call him God, but the universe just has a way of taking those who are grateful and giving them more. And that'll bring us to our final point here. So. To give you guys something to think on, I wrote a little quote here. When you learn to be thankful with nothing, the universe tends to reward you with all that you need. Conversely, if you insist you don't have enough, even when you have everything, you, prob you rob yourself of some of life's most simple pleasures and risk dying with a sense of never having done enough in life. So the scarcity mindset goes just beyond what you have right now. If you habituate to the idea of scarcity over time, you're gonna say, I'm never enough, I'm never gonna do this, I'm never gonna do that, I'll never live a fulfilled life just because X, Y, and Z. And inevitably you get to your grave and you say, man, I wish I had done more. And again, that's scarcity. Scarcity is a monster that will shackle itself to you until the day that you die. But the only way to free yourself and the way to live not just a f emancipated life, a, a life free of being shackled to scarcity, but an overall happier life is to adopt that idea of gratitude. Inevitably, you know, things are, things may be rough sometimes and that's okay, but most of the time you are in a good spot and you have a lot of things going for you. So it helps to kind of take a minute to get some perspective and find ways to be thankful for even the smallest little things. And when you do that, the universe has a way of getting you everything that you'll ever need in life and more. So life will surprise you in that way. And that'll wrap it up for today, friends. And we're going to end in the traditional way. And that's by me saying, always remember that you are wanted, you are loved, you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has. And the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You.